Hello guys, it's MeshTech here. Today I want to show you how you can establish an internet connection to your RT350 without the need of additional hardware. All you're gonna need is just the USB cable that came along with your device and a Windows PC. Enjoy! You may ask yourself, why would you need an internet connection on your device? Well, there are actually many reasons to have an internet connection on your RG350. One of it is the possibility to use the multiplayer option in ported games like Quake 2, Quake 3 or Devolution X, or multiplayer retro gaming in emulated games like Street Fighter 2 or Bomberman 93 on Temper, a TurboGrafx-16 emulator. Another point is that more system apps make use of it, like the latest version of Rogue Firmware shows us. Rogue now has an app store that allows us to simply download all different emulators and ports directly to our device. Or the Rogue Updater, better known as the Rogue Update Manager, that even allows us to update the firmware of our RT350 via the internet. So, an internet connection comes along with more comfortability for our RT350 and allows you to play multiplayer games with it. Very cool stuff. In the past, I showed you a way to make use of a Wi-Fi adapter to access the internet. And I still prefer this solution for the freedom of being connected wireless. But today, I will show you how you can establish a wired connection without spending extra money for additional hardware. At this point, I want to say big thanks to Brad Olson for mentioning this method to me so I can show it to you guys. Now grab your RG350 and let's start. Alright, so all we're gonna need now is the USB cable that came along with our RG350, a PC running Windows 10 and a tool called NAT32. I put you the link to this application into the video description. And if you follow that link, it will take you to the home page of NAT32. So what NAT32 does, in simple words, it forwards the internet connection of your PC to your RG350 using the linked network connection over the USB cable. This is called a tethered internet connection. If you're interested in the details about this method, take a look into the NAT32 SR white paper. But now let's continue installing NAT32 to our PC. Therefore, click on the Downloads button and choose the latest release build. At the time I'm making this video, it's version 2.2 from March the 20th. Left click on the link, wait until the download is complete, switch over to your download folder and extract the NAT32 v2.zip archive. All right. Now it's time to connect your RG350 to your PC using the USB 2 connector on the device. It's the upper right port on your RG350. Alright, now it's time to install NUT32 and therefore just enter the NUT32 v2 folder and double click on the setup.exe. This will start the installation wizard. Just simply click on next. Enter your name, mesh tech, and click on next. Click on next again, and in the next dialog, you can choose a location where you like to install NAT32. I'm gonna leave it with the default folder, choose to install for everyone or just for me, and click on next. Click next again, and it's gonna install NAT32 to your PC. Now the installation is complete, click on close and switch over to your installation folder. So in my case, this was on C and NAT32 v2 folder. When you enter that folder, scroll all the way down until you find the NAT32.exe and start it. All right, now we started NAT32 and on the first start, it's gonna take a while until it finds all your network interfaces so be patient and wait until the configuration dialog appears. Now here we got the configuration dialog. Now let's start to configure our setup. So click on continue 
and confirm the next dialog by clicking on OK. And now we see a list of all our interfaces NUC32 found. From that list, we want to choose the interface that provides us the internet access. In my case, it's the Wi-Fi adapter up here. Now let's choose it from the list and set the connection type to internet. Now the second entry we want to find in the list is the USB Ethernet slash RNDIS gadget, which is the second entry here. And this actually is the interface to our RG350. Now we want to choose this connection type to be private. And as soon as we click on private, this address details window will appear to specify the IP address and the network mask. But we can leave this on the default settings, so just click on OK and press continue. Now that we have set up both of the interfaces, we can confirm this dialog by pressing OK. Now as you can see, NAT32 creates some shortcuts for us and shows us the configuration of the interface that provides us the internet access. So click on apply and wait until NAT32 has configured that interface. Now the next window shows us the configuration of the interface to our RG350. Once again, we leave the settings as they are and click on apply. Now NUT32 is doing its magic in the background and configures the tethered internet connection for our RG350. Wait a while until the configuration process is done. And here we are. If you see that window, everything worked fine, so press on OK and confirm the final step of the configuration with another click on OK. Now the tethered internet connection from our PC to our RT350 is established. Now one last step is required to finish the configuration. And therefore we're gonna need PuTTY, a SSH client. I put you the link to that tool into the video description, so simply download it and install it. And as soon as you've installed it, just start it up and create a new connection to your RG350. Since I've already created a connection, let me show you how the connection needs to be set up. In the hostname field, you simply enter the IP address of the USB connection to your RG350, which should be 10.1.1.2. As connection type, you choose SSH. Now we can open this connection and it brings us to this window. Log in with root. Now as a first test, let's try to ping the Google server, which has the IP address 8.8.8.8. .8 and as you can see, we get a response from the Google server. So this proves that our RT350 now can communicate to the World Wide Web. Now let's try to ping www.google.com. And as you can see, our RT350 can't resolve the name www.google.com. This is because we are currently missing a name server on our RG350. And to solve this little problem, we just have to enter echo, whitespace, now quote, name server, whitespace, 8.8.8.8, .8 quote, whitespace, greater, whitespace, slash etc, slash resolve.conf and this adds Google as our name server so we use the Google server to resolve the URLs for us. Okay now hit enter and let's try to ping Google again so we're gonna type ping www.google.com and as you can see this time we also get a response from www.google.com now everything is prepared to make use of our tethered internet connection between our PC and the RG350. Now let's switch over to our RG350 and test out our newly created internet connection. Now that I've recently installed Rogue firmware on my RG350, we can make use of the App Store and the Rogue Updater. Therefore, switch over to the Settings menu and navigate all the way down until you find the Rogue App Store and the Rogue Updater. Now let's take a look into the Rogue App Store. So let's start it. It's gonna check the connection and as you can see it's already updating the repository. And here we are. Now as you can see 
we got a list of emulators here that we can choose from to download. Um, since I have a fresh installation on my device here, I don't have too many emulators installed yet. But for example, let's download the FCE UX emulator. So I'm gonna scroll over, press the A button, and now you can see it's gonna download it from the internet. And here we are. The entry turned green, that means we have successfully installed it. Let's download another emulator. Let's say we're gonna download DOSBox. So let's download that emulator too. Wait a while until the download has started. And here we are. Now let's check if both emulators are on the system. So switch over to the emulator section. And as you can see now we got DOSBox here and we got FCE UX on the device too. Okay, and switch over to the ports. Um, as you can see, we got free Doom here. So let's download this one as well. Just simply click on the A button to start the download. Wait until the download has complete. All right, and let's get out and see if we got free Doom now. So switch over to the game section. And as you can see, we got all the free Doom download now. So as you can see, Rogue together with a internet connection absolutely makes sense on your RG350. It's so easy to update your emulators or ported games with it. Or let me show you another thing, the Rogue updater. That means you can even update the firmware on your RG350 over the internet. So at the moment, I'm at the latest version 1.7.99 but I could downgrade to any older version now or upgrade to a newer version as soon as it is available. So this is what I want to show you for today. An easy way to establish an internet connection to your RG350 that you can do right now and without the need of spending extra money on hardware like a Wi-Fi adapter. This is something all of you guys can do out there to make use of all features on the RG350 that need an internet connection such as firmware updates, downloading emulators, apps and games, or even multiplayer gaming. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked this tutorial video. If it helps you, I'd appreciate if you give me a thumbs up for it. Leave a comment below and if you haven't done yet, feel free to subscribe to my channel so we'll see each other again in my next videos. Bye!